Okay, welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. This video isn't going to monetize because it's going to constitute gun modification, blah, blah, blah. But I want to show this because I'm interested myself and I thought the only way to do this for truth is to try and do it in one complete take. You may notice that this is the um, CZ457 long range precision. Now, I rather luckily managed to acquire a 17 HMR barrel, which I've also put on it from a, this one from a 455, but they're fully interchangeable, fully compatible. So I put this on, been plinking a bit with this, having a shot with it. Um, just today, we've got a target out 328 metres, I think it was. And uh, this is horrendous in the wind. It's blowing like five mils in the wind, which isn't particularly strong. But anyway, I've got to do this in one take, because if I don't do it in one take, it's not believable. And to be fair, I haven't tried this, so it's all a learning experience for me too. So here we go. This is how you change the barrel. I have prepared everything I think I need but we shall see. So, 17 HMR magazine out. The gun needs to come out of the stock. I'm on the back of my trailer. I'm on a field, in a field. So it's all very free. Trigger guards off. The stock is off. Let's just pop that there because we need to just watch out that the little um, bedding block thingy bob doesn't, you know, drop on the floor. I'll just pop that back in the stock. Right. There are two things we've got to do. Number one of which should have been to open the tools or open the little packet of bits and pieces before I started this. Because me being me, travelling light or trying to. So, in here, I've got the bits that I've robbed off all that. They were off the LRP, and the bits that are on it are the bits I robbed off the 455 17HMR. But don't worry, it's not bodgery. These things are truly incompatible. Uh, sorry, truly compatible. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to just slacken off the magazine well off the bottom of the gun. Doing this in a muddy field is probably a bad idea. I don't think this needs to come off completely, but one of them does need to come out, which is the back one needs to come out. But you can leave it, you can leave it nipped on if you want, but I've just taken it off. The next stage, this is with a three millimeter Allen key, I think. There are two screws in the front of the action. This is the same on a 455 or a 457. And that's in the low setting on the torque wrench. So I'll just swap torque wrenches. And hope that this torque wrench, yeah, that's fine. So we're just going to slacken those off. It doesn't hurt to take them out completely if you really want to, but I don't especially want to drop these little grub screws on the floor. And the barrel, once you get them loose enough, will slot out and because I've taken the mag off if I just drop this this way the bolt is still in not that it matters this little bit of metal here drops out too now that is actually the um, the, the the specific feed ramp and head spacing tool for each barrel so with that in the action I hope you can see this that barrel when it goes in actually butts up to that like that to head space it precisely so that goes with the 17 HMR barrel Okay, let's just put those to one side. In fact, I'll put that in the little box there. From the other gun, which I tipped out of the box, I've got the one for the seven, for the two-two rim fire barrel here. Put that down. The two-two rim fire barrel I have stored carefully in this bag. Me being me, I even gave it a brush through with a patch, and I put some orange electrical tape on the end just to protect the bare metal work. So that is going to go back in the action with the 2-2 rimfire headspace and feed ramp with it. But we'll put this in first because there's no particular order. That's what there is, yes. Let's put that in first. So we're just going to drop that in there and that will slot back and then the barrel will slot in like that. And as you tighten the screws, it will all self-align. 
because everything's been very well machined and I can just feel that barrel just turning slightly there as I nip the first screw up and I'll do these you know one after the other just nice and gentle I'm just going to give that tap on the end make sure it's fully in and I'm going to nip these up I don't know actually if there is a specified torque but I'm going to go to five newton meters which is what this torque wrench is set to it's moderate but not excessive right so the barrel's in now we just need to align the little metal insert inside and we're going to put the trigger guard sorry not the trigger guard the magazine back on the magazine follower let's call it uh, for that I need back on the three millimeter allen key and put it the right way around I do like my little impromptu videos I hope you like them as well because this is the real world this isn't you know stage managed or lots of lovely set pieces So that will nip in there. Now this torque wrench is set at two newton meters. So, you know, they're just nipped in nicely. I'm not swinging on them. But it's a bit of consistency for the, um, the future ahead. Now, the fiddly little bit we've got to do now is because we're going back from the 17 magazine to the 2.2 magazine, which is shorter, there is a little spacer that fits in. And I need to just remind myself which way round this spacer fits because the magazine is going to go somewhere at the front there and I think the spacer goes like that so spacer in there magazine in there and in my little shot out 17 HMR box there is a small metal pin don't lose it and that slots in close one that slots in on the side of the trigger guard just to hold that spacer in. So now, if you change the magazine, clicks in and out easily. The last stage, that's all right, that's all right. Bolt's working fine. So, we're going to put it all back in the stock. Let's turn that over. The metal trigger guard, which I made a slight mistake on in my other video, it is metal, clips together. It's in two pieces like that. Front screws, front screw, that one just nips over the, the magazine release lever, which is here. Front screw back in there, back screw in there. And I'm going to nip these up to five newton meters using the T25 Torx, which is pretty much common for the rest of the gun, other than the Allen key for the barrel. I'm just going to check that sitting in the action in the stock correctly, which it is. Nip up the front one. Nip up the back one. I'm just going to give it a little thump. Just seats it back in its stock. And now... Nip those back up. 2-2 magazine goes back in. As you can see, I left the scope on here. I'm just going to put all those back in there before I lose anything. And that is now back in 2 2 rimfire. So, the last shots I had with this using the SK Match Ammo were at 305 metres. Um, I have just expanded today. This one's at 327, 328, something like that. So, um, I'm going to dial this back to 15.1 mils which was my 305 correction and I'm going to really really hope that this one hits so uh, right Dave without pressing stop if you want to move the camera angle see if we can get me in see if we can get the target in the sheep are well off to one side they're not a problem And I'm going to have a little think about what dimension I want in here. Hmm. 
Right, so. If I remember correctly, this should still be recording. So my sound is still on, even if the camera is pointing where the camera is pointing. And if I remember correctly, I did actually make some corrections to the Kestrel, which is, this is running off on Wi-Fi, on, on Bluetooth or whatever, on the head-up display. So that should actually be correct now. So 17.4 mils is its, is its estimate. 17.4 mils. This could be completely fun. It could be completely not. We've got safe backgrounds, safe backstop. The sheep are all well off to one side. So I shall put five rounds in the gun. And believe you me, if this hits, it means A, I've got the wind right, and B, well, the CZ is extremely good in its barrel change capability. If I'm honest, I'm not expecting it to hit. So, Dave, are we filming? Is everything ready? Yeah, we're on target. Okay, could you go on the spotting scope, please? I need to just dial that back to zero because I had some compensation on for the 17 HMR. I'm going to put a mill of wind on right, so um, no, 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 no. anti-clockwise is right on this one. Mm, maybe a bit less. Hope for the best. Right, Dave, are you spotting the target? Spotting. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. Bear in mind I have cleaned this barrel as well. It shouldn't make a huge amount of difference, but let's just see what this is like. Because if it passes this test, it's unbelievable. Shooting. Any indication at all, Dave? No. Looks like we made this test quite hard then. A plate to the left. The sun's right in my eye now. So to the right from your last shot. Hooray! Well, do you know what? That really isn't too bad, is it? Because you know, it's a breezy day. We've completely changed locations from the last thing, and that's that. But you know what? While it's running, let's leave it. While it's filming, let's leave it running, and just see if I can refine this back on a little bit. So, I need something like a lot more windage on right because, again, we're sheltered a bit up here, and down there, it's clearly blowing across. So I am going to put mm, I'm going to put three mils on there. I'm just going to add a touch of elevation. Right, you're back on the spotting scope, Dave. I'm aiming centre, firing. Any indication? Yeah, this is a bit more fun with a lot more wind, isn't it? And that's a big plate as well. So I'm just going to have another slight refinement on that firing solution because there was a lot of Kentucky going on there. prospect of making a video that you're not going to monetize is a lot less stressful. Right, I'm going to put another, I'm going to put another half mil on that. Okay, firing. Nothing. Half a plate right. Level with the top edge. Uh, 
quarter flat high. Hit. 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 Right. You'll notice I belted off three rounds there as fast as possible to try and maintain in that same wind condition. Hopefully those hits will have been heard on camera. They might have, they might have not, but they were hits. You'll see by the number of misses, there was no need to lie. After 15 shots, what's that, five hits? Or 15 shots? Right, we're gonna go for a string now. You ready? Shooting. Slightly over the top. Over clock, over the top. That wind is whistling down the bottom of that hill and lifting them right over the top. Well, there is a crest halfway down the hill, so you might have a wind on. <laughs> Just out of the plate at two o'clock that one. Ah oh, well, we had some fun, didn't we? <laughs> you know, wonder I've gone through so much ammo in this rifle. Anyway, there's some honesty for you. I don't know if you can see me here, I'll just put my head in a little bit. There's some honesty for you, but you know what? Given the changeable wind conditions and the distance involved and the fact we're in a completely different venue, I'm actually rather impressed with that. And that's at 328, 27 metres. I can't remember what I set it at, but you know, you get the ballpark. Uh, I'll be on it, that's a big gong as well. That's a 500 millimetre gong. I was shooting a 200 millimetre before, wasn't I? Just goes to show you when the wind's up, you cannot, you know, well, it's, it, you can, but it's very hard getting it right. Still, um, had I done that on paper at 50 metres, say, or 100 metres, in, in, in equivalent conditions and shot one group, taken it apart, put it back together, blah, 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 it would have probably shown a lot different. But I think that's quite good. I'm actually quite pleased with that, and I am Mr Picky Parkin. So, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll be making lots more videos like this sort of thing. And this one isn't going to be monetized because YouTube will no doubt say, I have dismantled guns and shown you how to build guns and blah, blah, blah. So, enjoy this one. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Well, we just shot a few more, and this time we have actually got a group on the target, and it's become apparent to us, and this is a new venue we've got here, there's a, a crest in the middle of this field, and we're getting a, a significant wind bump off it, which is running about 0.8 mils high, because I was spotting, and we thought they were nipping the top, but they're going clear over the top of the plate. And now we've got that uh, 0.8 dialed off. We've actually got a decent string of shots, still left to right, but just 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 slightly high of centre, because of course the you know the wind is significant, and with a two two rim fire, it's always going to do plenty. And we're not crying over it. It's all about fun, isn't it? So um, it's it's more interesting to note the pattern of the way the wind's moving it. But now we're on a bigger plate. We're not really getting any misses. We can of course spot the shots more easily, because in a soft muddy field, the um, the ground absorbs two to fire bullets very safely but it means you don't see a lot of trace or impact still there we go so if i just zoom maybe down there a little bit now i don't know whether you'll pick it up on camera you can just slightly get the crest there that's dead in front of us well when you're standing and not looking through a camera it is far more apparent that that is uh, the wind's coming in towards us which you can see you can see the wind is blowing towards us on the Kestrel there, which is the, the wind vane, if anything, today. And uh, we've got a lot of clear space beyond the bottom of this field. So the wind's coming in towards us, and it's bumping up and flipping the bullets up off that. But still, now we've got it sorted, it's always good to refine things. And it's all about fun. It's not about saying, I shot the smallest group. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now. I'm just walking down to target now and if I stand still you can see the wind just in the grass 
it's blowing, I reckon, I don't know, five, six, seven meters per second. I haven't actually measured it. I sit there with the Kestrel and I never use the damn thing half the time. I'm lazy. I like watching bullets fly and spotting splash. Anyway, we're coming towards the crest up here. And that's what we're getting the wind bump from. The wind is coming in from that direction. It's about a, maybe a quarter value on the direction. Quartering in towards us rather. But you get the idea. It's amazing though, when you, you, know, you see a nice big green grassy field and you walk across it and you, you, know, you note the, the texture of the ground and you, you pick up on the fact that that wind is flowing like a fluid. It is a fluid and it squashes and splashes around and whiffs about and of course these little tiny bullets at this long range they've not got massive ballistic coefficients they've not got massive speed they've not got massive energy and they do get woofed around a bit but interestingly the 2-2 two -two rimfire needed less windage for that distance than the 1.7 HMR and although the 1.7 HMR stays supersonic for about 240 odd meters it still drops below and I don't like crossing the transonic um, so then when I flipped over to the the 22 rimfire you know which I've shot with a lot more to be fair over the last couple of weeks making the videos with the gun a I knew a lot more about what it was going to do but it was really interesting to see the barrel change and see how that flipped things around a bit it's all good fun. Are we getting anywhere near this target yet? I'm walking along with the camera held out in front of me, so if you're getting some kind of motion sickness, I do apologise. So, we ended up, we were shooting at 15.1 mils of elevation Oh no, sorry, 15.6 mils of elevation in the end with the correction at 305 metres last week. It was 15.1 on the day, but I made some tweaks on the Kestrel, so it's coming out at 15.6. And uh, we dialed on here, I think 17.1, and we ended up shooting on 16.3. And that's, that's a big, that's a 500 millimetre gong. There you go, you can see the bullet strike on there. And you know what, even at that, they're still hitting, hitting high. The one in the centre was actually the very last shot. Well done for that one, which was, you know, completely look. But you can see the generalised left to right spray of it. But we had a lot going over the top. And once we got that, uh, once we got those spotted, which is difficult through the rifle, it's easier through the spotting scope. And it's not because of recoil, it's just the fact they're tiny little bullets. Um, that wind bump becomes very apparent and we can dial it off. Anyway, there we go. And the crowd are going wild. <laughs> 